Hello everyone, I've missed you. I know we can't be together in our classroom right now because we're trying to stay safe and stay home. So I thought I would video myself reading so that you can watch it at home. Um, today I'm gonna be reading Love That Dog. Now before you ask why I'm not reading letters from Rifka, which I, I would be reading because we didn't finish it, um, it's in my classroom and I'm not allowed to go up there. So once I am, I will get that and I will read that. But for today, we're gonna read Love That Dog by Sharon Creech. And you can see the dog on there. I would also like to state that I am reading this with permission from Scholastic. This is not a picture book, but it doesn't have chapters either. It is written as a free verse poem. So that is a poem that doesn't really rhyme. It's just free verse. And you can see that in here, the short lines. Helps us know it's a poem. But also, it's written as a journal entry. You can see this one says October 17th. This one says March 1st. All of them have dates. And I'll read those aloud too. So, let's go ahead and get started with Love That Dog by Sharon Creech. Jack, room 105, Miss Stretchberry, September 13th. I don't want to because boys don't write poetry. Girls do. This is how that page looks. September 21st. I tried. Can't do it. Brain's empty. September 27th. I don't understand the poem about the red wheelbarrow and the white chickens and why so much depends upon them. If that is a poem about the red wheelbarrow and the white chickens, then any words can be a poem. You've just got to make short lines. And he even makes really short lines here. Make short lines. October 4th. Do you promise not to read it out loud? Do you promise not to put it on the board? Okay, here it is but I don't like it. So much depends upon a blue car splattered with mud speeding down the road. October 10th. What do you mean, why does so much depend upon a blue car? You didn't say before that I had to tell why. The wheelbarrow guy didn't tell why. And this is how his journal entry looks. And then the poems right here that he wrote for school. October 17th. What was up with the Snowy Woods poem you read today? Why doesn't the person just keep going if he's got so many miles to go before he sleeps? And why do I have to tell more about the blue car splattered with mud speeding down the road? I don't want to write about that blue car that had miles to go before it slept. So many miles to go, in such a hurry. October 24th. I am sorry to say I did not really understand the Tiger Tiger Burning Bright poem but at least it sounded good in my ears. Here is the blue car with tiger sound. Blue car, blue car, shining bright in the darkness of the night. Who could see you speeding by like a comet in the sky? I could see you in the night, blue car, blue car, shining bright. I could see you speeding by like a comet in the sky. Some of the tiger sounds are still in my ears like drums, beat, beat, beating. <clears throat> Now this one may have sounded good in his ears, like he says, because this one actually rhymes. It says, shining bright in the night, speeding by in the sky, it rhymes. So maybe that's why he's saying it sounds good in his ears, because it actually sounds like a poem to him. October, 30, October 31st. Yes, you can put the two blue car poems on the board, but only if you don't put my name on them. November 6th. They look nice typed up like that on blue paper on a yellow board. But still, don't tell anyone who wrote them, okay? And what does anonymous mean? Is it good? November 9th. I don't have any pets, so I can't write about one, and especially I can't write a poem about one. November 15th. Yes, I used to have a pet. I don't want to write about it. You're going to ask me, why not, right? November 22nd. Pretend I still have that pet. Can't I make up a pet? 
A different one? Like a tiger or a hamster? A goldfish? Turtle? Snail? Worm? Flea? November 29th. I liked those small poems we read today. When they're small like that, you can read a whole bunch in a short time, and then in your head are all the pictures of all the small things from all the small poems. I liked how the kitten leaped in the cat poem, and how you could see the long head of the horse in the horse poem. On this page, they even made the word small, really small. And especially I liked the dog in the dog poem, because that's just how my yellow dog used to lie down, with his tongue all limp and his chin between his paws, and how he'd sometimes chomp at a fly and then sleep in his loose skin, just like that poet Miss Valerie Worth says in her small dog poem. December 4th. Why do you want to type up what I wrote about reading the small poems? It's not a poem, is it? I guess you can put it on the board if you want to, but don't put my name on it in case other people think it's not a poem. December 13th. I guess it does look like a poem when you see it typed up like that, but I think maybe it would look better if there was more space between the lines, like how I wrote it the first time. And I liked the picture of the yellow dog you put beside it, but that's not how my yellow dog looked. January 10th. I really, really, really did not get the pasture poem you read today. I mean, somebody's going out to the pasture to clean the spring and to get the little tottery calf while he's out there and he isn't going to be gone long and he wants you, who is you, to come too? I mean, really? And you said that Mr. Robert Frost, who wrote about the pasture, was also the one who wrote about those snowy woods and the miles to go before he sleeps? Well, I think Mr. Robert Frost has a little too much time on his hands. January 17th. Remember the wheelbarrow poem you read the first week of school? Maybe the wheelbarrow poet was just making a picture with words. And someone else, like maybe his teacher, typed it up and then people thought it was a poem because it looked like one typed up like that. And maybe that's the same thing that happened with Mr. Robert Frost. Maybe he was just making pictures with words about the snowy woods and the pasture. And his teacher typed them up and they looked like poems. So people thought they were poems. Like how you did with the blue car things and reading the small poems thing on the board. Typed up, they look like poems, and the other kids are looking at them, and they think they really are poems, and they are all saying, who wrote that? January 24th. We were going for a drive, and my father said, we won't be gone long, you come too. And so I went, and we drove and drove, until we stopped at a red brick building with a sign in blue letters, Animal Protection Shelter. And inside, we walked down a long cement path past cages with all kinds of dogs, big and small, fat and skinny. Some of them hiding in the corner, but most of them bark, bark, barking and jumping up against the wire cage as we walked past as if they were saying, me, me, choose me, I'm the best one. And that's where we saw the yellow dog standing against the cage with his paws curled around the wire and his long red tongue hanging out and his big black eyes looking a little sad and his long tail wag, wag, wagging, as if he were saying, me, 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 choose me. And we did, we chose him. And in the car, he put his head against my chest and wrapped his paws around my arm as if he were saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And the other dogs in the cages get killed dead if nobody chooses them. January 31st. Yes, you can type up what I wrote about my yellow dog, but leave off the part about the other dogs getting killed dead because that's too sad. And don't put my name on it, please. And maybe it would look good on yellow paper. And maybe the title should be You Come Too. All right, that is where I'm going to stop. We are close to halfway done. So I'll pick up on the rest next video. I hope you enjoyed it.